In this video, I'll show you the best way to mod your original Xbox. This video will cover the modification process for Xbox's revisions 1.0 through 1.4. This video will show the entire process of installing your own Aladdin mod chip, flashing it with Serbios, and installing a high capacity hard drive so you can play all your favorite Xbox games directly from your console. Stay tuned. Mad Mod. Be sure to check the video description for a list of all equipment and software used in this video. You can determine which revision Xbox you have by flipping the console over and taking a look at the sticker on the bottom. Take note of the manufacturing date and the hardware serial number to identify your Xbox revision. If your Xbox is a revision 1.6, keep an eye out for my upcoming video where I will show you how to install high capacity hard drives in 1.6 revision Xboxes using Evo X with Titan Patch instead of Serbios. To begin the disassembly process, remove the four rubber feet from the bottom of the console. You must also peel back the stickers to reveal two hidden bolts. If you would like to preserve these stickers, you can use a heat gun or hair dryer to heat the adhesive up first. Using a T20 Torx screwdriver, remove the six bolts from the bottom of the Xbox. Carefully turn the Xbox back upright and lift off the top part of the shell. Next, grab a T10 Torx screwdriver to remove three more bolts from the inside. The first one is under this ribbon cable. And there are two more at the front corners of the optical drive. Now we can remove this hard drive tray. I usually start by unplugging this ribbon cable. Before completely removing the hard drive tray, unhook the hard drive power cable from this little clip. Now grab a T15 Torx screwdriver to remove all four bolts that are securing the hard drive inside the hard drive tray. Now you can remove the hard drive and unplug the power connector. These power connectors can be very stubborn if it's your first time taking the console apart, so don't be afraid to use a little force here. Carefully lift the optical drive out of the console. You will need to unplug the ribbon cable and the yellow power cable. Next, unplug the rest of the connections that are still attached to the motherboard. Unplug the motherboard's power supply. Unplug the fan at the back of the Xbox. If you left the yellow optical drive power cord plugged in like I did, go ahead and unplug it. Unplug the multicolor connectors at the front of the Xbox. These go to the controller ports and unplug the yellow wires that go to the power switch and eject switch. Next, using a T10 Torx screwdriver, remove the 11 screws that hold the motherboard in place. If you like videos about electronics, 3D printing, or retro gaming, go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I have a long list of ideas for new videos just like this one. If you wanna see what else I've been working on, be sure to go follow my Twitch channel and see all the ideas that might not make it to YouTube. Starting from the front, gently lift out the Xbox motherboard. If this is the first time you've had your Xbox opened up, you will definitely want to take a look at the clock capacitor. The clock capacitor stays charged up for a little while after the console has been unplugged to save the system time and date. Unfortunately, these particular capacitors love to leak all over the place and cause lots of damage to your Xbox motherboard. Here you can see the clock capacitor on this console has already started to leak. I'm just going to remove it by heating up the leads with a soldering iron. Here you can get a good look at some of that nasty corrosion. This whole corner of the motherboard is pretty crusty, so I'm going to give it a bath with some isopropyl alcohol. I will be leaving the clock capacitor out of this console since it's not essential for the console to function correctly. If you would like to replace your clock capacitor, you will need another 1 farad 2.7 volt supercapacitor. These cotton swabs show just how filthy the Xbox motherboard was. After cleaning, your Xbox motherboard should be shiny again. Since this Xbox had never been serviced before, I will also be replacing the thermal compound. 
You can replace the thermal compound by unclipping the CPU and GPU heatsinks. You can use a prying tool to help unclip these heatsinks. Just be careful not to damage anything on the Xbox's motherboard. The CPU heatsink lifts off easily because the thermal paste is already dry and brittle. The GPU heatsink is usually much tougher to get off. I recommend using a plastic spudger to pry it off from this side. Here, you can see the original thermal compound has hardened. I will be scraping these heat sinks clean using my plastic spudger and some isopropyl alcohol. I will also be cleaning up the CPU and GPU using my plastic spudger and some isopropyl alcohol. While cleaning up the CPU and GPU, be careful not to use too much force or you may damage something on the Xbox motherboard. Here is what the CPU and GPU look like all cleaned up. For replacement thermal compound, I usually go with Arctic Silver 5. Arctic Silver 5 has not sponsored this video in any way. I have personally had good experience with Arctic Silver 5 saving other Microsoft consoles from overheating. Apply a generous amount of Arctic Silver 5 to both the CPU and GPU. Then replace both of the heat sinks and reinstall the heat sink clips. Now we can begin installing the Aladdin mod chip. This set of connections on the Xbox motherboard is called the LPC port or the debug port. We are going to connect the Aladdin mod chip to these pins to provide the Xbox with an alternative BIOS. Aladdin mod chips come with a set of pin headers like this. You may notice that the pin header has an extra pin that does not allow it to connect to the Xbox's debug port. You can remove the extra pin by pushing it out with a small screwdriver or a set of tweezers like this. Insert the pin header into the LPC port as shown here. Temporarily secure the pins with a piece of tape while soldering them in place. Now flip the Xbox motherboard over to the back side and begin to solder in each pin. The pads on these motherboards are very small, so I recommend using a little extra flux to make your soldering job easier. To tell the Xbox to boot using the debug port, we will need to connect the Xbox's D0 pin to ground. The D0 point can be found in this cluster of pads. It is the third from the top. I will include a close-up image in case this is a little hard to see. I recommend using flux and adding a little bit of solder to this pad before you connect a wire. You should use 30 gauge wire if possible to make this easier. Be careful not to pull up this trace while moving the wire around. You can run this wire around the side of the motherboard or through one of the unused pads like I did here. Next, we need to prepare the Aladdin mod chip. Since some of these clone mod chips cannot be flashed from within the Xbox console, I will be removing the BIOS chip and flashing it manually. These BIOS chips are called DIP32 chips. I will be flashing them using a PLCC32 adapter inside my little ROM flasher here. This thing is called a Mini Pro Programmer. The model number is TL866CS. I will connect my ROM programmer to the computer and open up the MiniPro programming software. First, I'll have to select the device ID for the chip that is being flashed. Most of these clone Aladdin mod chips do not have the correct number etched on the BIOS chip. Clone mod chips with the part number SST49LF020A may need to be flashed as a different model number. 
The most common chip that's used in these mod chips is actually an SST49LF002A. So that's what I'm going to select here. After setting the device ID, I'm going to try to read from the chip just to verify that I have the correct device ID selected. Since that was successful, I will go ahead and open up the Serbios file. At the time of recording, the newest version of Serbios is V2.02R. I will be using the Serbios binary file that supports UDMA5. If you are using any SATA to IDE adapter for your hard drive that is not StarTech branded, you should select the standard Serbios Debug BIOS. After opening the correct BIOS file, I will click the program button to begin flashing the BIOS chip. Now that flashing is complete, we can reinstall the BIOS chip back into the Aladdin mod chip. Next, we need to wire one of the quick solder pads to the BT point on the Aladdin mod chip. This connection makes sure that the Aladdin mod chip is set to always be on anytime the console is turned on. Next, we need to connect the D0 wire that we soldered earlier to the D0 point on the Aladdin mod chip. Now the mod chip is ready to install. Align the pin header with the pin socket on the Aladdin mod chip and press it into place. Now we can begin to reassemble the Xbox. Place the motherboard back inside the Xbox. Plug in the Xbox power supply. Plug in the Xbox's controller ports. Plug in the Xbox's power and eject switch. Plug in the fan at the rear of the Xbox. Reinstall all 11 screws that secure the motherboard. Replace the optical drive power cable. To reinstall the optical drive and upgraded hard drive, you will need one of these 40 pin 80 wire IDE cables. The one I'm using here is 24 inches long. To make sure everything fits together neatly, you will want to fold your cable in a right angle as shown here. That way the middle connection can reach the back of the optical drive. You will need another right angle fold underneath this connection and one more right beside it so the cable comes straight up from the back side of the optical drive. This is what it should look like before you install the optical drive. Plug in the optical drive's IDE and power connections. Reseat the optical drive inside the console. Now we need to prepare our high capacity hard drive. In this tutorial, I will be using a four terabyte drive. This is just a used drive that I got a great deal on on eBay. If you would like to install an even larger drive, this mod supports hard drives all the way up to 16 terabytes in size. To properly format this drive, you will need a handy piece of software called Fat Explorer. I'll have a link to where you can download this in the video description. Download the latest version of Fat Explorer. After opening the Fat Explorer software, select Formatting Tools from the menu, then select Original Xbox HDD. This will show a list of storage devices connected to your computer. Select the hard drive that you would like to use in your Xbox and click Next. Here, we're going to select SirBIOS since that is the BIOS we are using. If you are using a high capacity hard drive, Fat Explorer will automatically attempt to partition the drive. Leave the E and C partition at the default settings. I would recommend removing any partitions that go beyond the F drive by right clicking them and unchecking this box. For this mod, we want the F drive to be one large partition. This is where we will store all of our original Xbox games. After removing the other partitions, change the F partition size to the maximum amount. You may also want to change the allocation unit size. Since I am using a four terabyte drive, I ended up setting mine to 256 KB. Here's a quick look at some cluster size recommendations that were posted by Chaos Engineer on the original Xbox subreddit. The next screen will ask if you want to preload any information to the drive. I'm just gonna click next here. On this last screen, you can start the formatting process by clicking format. 
After formatting has completed, click Devices from the FAT Explorer menu. Select your Xbox's hard drive. Click Load Device. Now we can mount one of the partitions to make it viewable in Windows Explorer. Here, I'm going to mount the F drive so I can transfer some games over to my Xbox's hard drive. If FAT Explorer asks to install a driver, go ahead and let it install. Now that the drive has been mounted, I'm going to create a folder in the root directory called Games. This is where I will copy and paste my library of hard drive ready Xbox games. If your Xbox games have been ripped and are still in the .iso format, I would recommend using a utility like Xbox DVD Molitor to extract the ISOs into hard drive ready files. Before you can use your new hard drive, you must install a dashboard. Dashboards can be installed using a bootable disk or over FTP. Here, I will be loading my dashboard files directly onto the Xbox hard drive. To do this, you must open FAT Explorer and select your Xbox's hard drive. Load the device and mount the C partition. Paste your dashboard files in the root of the C drive. Here, I will be using XBMC for Gamers as my dashboard, and I also have the original Xbox dashboard files as a backup. For the new dashboard to boot up correctly in your system, you will need to rename the default.xbe file to xbox-.xbe. Now that the hard drive has been properly configured, remove it from the computer and reinstall it into the hard drive tray. Reinstall the hard drive back into the Xbox console, being careful to route the wires back where they came from. To use a newer, high capacity hard drive with your Xbox, you will need a SATA to IDE converter. I recommend using one of these StarTech adapters. There are several models of devices like this that will work, but the StarTech adapter supports the fastest read and write speeds. Plug the 4 pin Xbox hard drive power cord into the SATA adapter. Then plug the SATA adapter into the hard drive. You will need to fold these cables neatly so they fit in the small area behind the hard drive. I have seen some modders shorten these cables to make an easier fit, but that's not always necessary if the cables are folded like this. Now to route the IDE cable to the back of the hard drive, you will need to make a right angle fold to route the IDE cable underneath this clip. Then make another right angle fold to align the 40 pin IDE cable with the pins on the hard drive adapter. Plug in the IDE cable as shown here. This is what your cables should look like before closing the console. Reinstall the two screws at the front corners of the optical drive. Reinstall one screw that was hidden under the IDE cable. Reinstall the top part of the Xbox shell. Carefully turn the Xbox over and replace all six screws that were removed from the bottom of the console. Replace the rubber feet in all four corners. Now we need to test out the Xbox. Plug the Xbox into power, AV, and network if you have a network connection available. All right, it's finally time to turn on your freshly modded OG Xbox. After XBMC for Gamers has loaded, go ahead and create a profile. Browsing the games folder will show the selection of games that you have copied onto the Xbox's internal hard drive. If your Xbox is connected to a network, you can open the settings menu and select Downloader. Installing Downloader will allow you to install other pieces of software onto your Xbox over the internet. This software includes Homebrew, DLC for games, and even some emulators. In this tutorial, I will go ahead and set up Xbox Artwork Installer. This application will download the box arts for all the games you have on your Xbox's hard drive. After choosing to download Xbox Artwork Installer, you must select a file for the application to be installed in. Since I'm planning on using my F partition for everything, I'm going to go ahead and create a folder on the F partition called Apps.
After Xbox Artwork Installer has finished installing, press the B button to return to the Applications menu. Select Xbox Artwork Installer from the Applications menu. After launching Xbox Artwork Installer, follow the prompts to download all the artwork for your installed library of Xbox games. These downloads can take a long time depending on your internet connection, so be patient. If you are using the XBMC for Gamers dashboard, after the artwork has finished downloading, you can return to the Games menu and use the D-pad to change the view settings. This will adjust what you see when you're scrolling through your collection of games. There are plenty of options to pick from in XBMC for Gamers. My personal favorite settings are the ones that show the box spines like this, and this one that shows the disc artwork. That concludes this tutorial. There's lots more you can do with a modded Xbox, so I hope you have fun tinkering with your console. Leave a comment down below the video telling me what game console you would like to see modded next. Be sure to leave a like on the video if this helped you out. Don't forget to subscribe here on YouTube and go follow me on Twitch. My Twitch channel is twitch.tv slash modulus. That's twitch.tv slash m0dulus. Thank you so very much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.